Hey everyone, today I will be revealing 5 of the digital art tips that took my art from looking like this to this. Before we start, I just want to say that using these tips won't instantly make your art look 10 times better. You need to practice and improve as well, however, these tips did help me a lot in the process, so I'm going to be sharing them with you guys today. Starting off, tip number one is to experiment with brushes and find the ones that fit your style. This is the number one thing that I would tell my younger self to do because when I first started digital art, I would just randomly pick brushes that did not go together at all. My liner brush would be super thick and dark while my shading brush would be like an airbrush and have so much texture. And then I just choose random brushes to add more texture or variation because I thought my art was looking boring and this is the result of that. Evidently, my art was bad in many other ways as well, but after finding the brushes that fit with my style, my art improved drastically. You can find brushes by looking at what other artists who have the style that you want or really like use on Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter and try and get them. Or if you're more advanced, you can try making your own custom brushes, which I know is a setting in Procreate. Me personally, I looked at the brushes artists use, but then I usually tweak them so it fits in with my art style more by either fixing the stabilization or the curve. The two main brushes that I use are the felt tip brush and the paint brush. The felt tip brush is a modification of the calligraphy brush Procreate already has, while the paint brush is a modification of the one that Rinse Fair Art uses. One of the things I look for in a brush is its pressure opacity and how well it can blend with two colors because those are two things that are very important in my art style. However, these things are different for you. For example, if you have a more cartoony style, you might want something that has more stabilization than my brushes. Tip number two is to find your color range. Usually, by looking at an artist's illustration, you can tell what color range they opt for, and this is purely based on preference in my opinion. Sometimes artists like using washed out colors with no dramatic shadows, while other artists use super saturated and dramatic colors that pop out a lot more. No matter what you choose, it's important that you have fun using these colors. Another mini tip that I have is to create a color palette that has all your favorite colors in it and the ones that you use in almost every one of your drawings because this also helps pull together your art style which I've noticed definitely helped me on my Instagram me, page. It's this palette, you can kind of tell that it's random but I really like using pinks and blues for lighting and I also have my line art colors in here as well. Having it in one place just helps with organization as well. One thing that I find really important about this is to use the color range that you like and you prefer. Because for me, liner and sketching definitely aren't the ways that I enjoy doing digital art. The time when I have most fun is when I'm rendering or picking colors for my art. This is definitely a step that really makes digital art so much fun for me and I actually enjoy doing it. So I definitely recommend that you guys play around with color choices and figure out which ones that you like using. Tip number three is to observe other artists' illustrations, specifically how they stylize or draw certain things. I started doing this when I posted my art on Instagram because I was exposed to so many talented artists all at once. Now I have like four different artists that I constantly look at for my style reference, and those four mix is what I want my dream art style to be like. What you look for in each artist depends on you. You may also notice how some artists use effects like chromatic aberration or perspective blur, and you can start using them in your own art as well. I can't remember where, but I remember I saw this one artist who loved using the noise filter on their art, so I also started doing that. It's like this sort of grainy texture and I really like how it makes my art kind of come together. However, I did play around with the settings, so my noise filter isn't nearly as visible as theirs, but it still adds visual interest if my piece is looking really bland. You can also look at how other artists stylize backgrounds or skies for example, which is something that I've been trying to do lately since I have been getting into drawing backgrounds and not just doing simple like plain color ones because that's definitely really fun and I want to get into character building or world building a bit more, and yeah. Tip number 4 made such a drastic change in my art and it's learning lighting and the different layer modes. I'll show you guys an example. For this piece of my OC Maya, this is how it looked before I started adding lighting and this is the after. Obviously, there's a huge difference, so I thought that it would be better if I actually show you guys how to do it. And starting off, I add a multiply layer of a color, usually purple or blue, so the drawing looks more cohesive in general. Then I add a pink glow on one side of the drawing for lighting, usually it's very soft because I use the overlay mode and I don't want the lighting to be super harsh, I'll be adding in the solid lighting later on. If I want my piece to look more dramatic, then I usually add room lighting using the add layer and I use a pink or orange color. Sometimes I add another multiply layer to deepen the shadows as well if I want my piece to look super dramatic. Lighting literally makes or breaks your piece, especially if you don't know how to use the layer modes properly. I won't be going over each and every single one of them because there are plenty of tutorials already explaining that on YouTube. And I know the layer modes also may differ from app to app. I always use Procreate since it's on my iPad and it's just easier, but I have used Clip Studio Paint before and I know that they sometimes give different name options for the layer modes, but just play around with it and figure out what works for your art and what doesn't. And 
The final tip in today's video is learning more about composition. Whether you're drawing humans or animals or simply day-to-day -day objects, learning how to place them on your canvas makes such a difference. I learned that having multiple subject matters usually is, makes it easier to arrange since they all have different shapes or sizes. However, if you're like me and only draw characters or one character at a time and don't really like drawing groups of people, then I recommend adding in hands or arms to clear up any empty space and especially if you make them holding some sort of object like flowers, it can really add a lot of visual interest. First off, you get to practice more hand anatomy, you can never practice anatomy too much, and it also makes the piece just look better in general. This is what my drawing that I'm drawing right now would have looked like without Maya's other hand, which yes, it does look decent overall, but I feel like adding the hand just, ma just makes it look a lot better and fills up the empty space. I learned that if you have a nice balance between negative and positive space, then it just makes the drawing look a lot better. And I remember learning about this in elementary school. I don't know if anyone else did, but this just kind of popped into my mind. And I realized by looking at other artists' work that they also tend to do something like this. So that's all for the main tips of this video. And I thought I'd just share some miscellaneous small ones that I also noticed helped me along the way of my digital art journey. First off, I definitely got more comfortable using references and photo studies and learning how to stylize those references into my more anime-esque art style, which you can see in this example. I recommend going to Pinterest for references, by the way, because they have so many creative ones that definitely help me out of art block a lot. I also really like drawing in additions like flowers or food. It's so much fun to experiment with my art style by drawing more realistic things, especially when I did my birthday drawing last month and I got to draw like a birthday cake and the frosting was so much fun and especially like the little berries on top. I don't know, something about them and just adding in the highlights is just so satisfying to see. And it also looked very delicious at the end. I remember before I would hate sketching digitally, but now I've actually become so much more comfortable with it and I think I actually find it easier since I can play around with the anatomy more and fix things. Especially since when I'm drawing traditionally, I can't like fix my anatomy or there's only so many times that you can erase before your paper gets soiled and then you have to like redo it on a different page. And I think I definitely like doing the sketching digitally better than doing it traditionally now since it's just so much easier and I get to play around with it a lot more. I also think that my poses are a lot more fluid when I do them digitally, especially since I finally learned how to take my sketch and put that as my line art. Speaking of which, I think I've been like not doing liner as much lately because I really like the fluidity in my sketches. Something that I recommend doing is just taking your sketch and like duplicating the layer so you still have the sketch layer. And then erasing like all the unnecessary like guidelines and stuff. It may seem really tedious, but I've learned that it really helps keep in like the flow of the sketch and it doesn't make your lines too harsh, especially if you're not a liner person like me. So anyways, I think I'm slowly developing my digital art style little by little, but obviously I still have a long way to go. Let me know if you guys want any other tutorials like how I render or how I draw like eyes or whatever because I know I've been getting some specific requests but I'm not sure if I should put them on my main channel or on my shorts channel so let me know all that down below thank you guys so much for watching till the end I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you guys next time bye bye